Wake up, Jagger. We have big and breaking news that has immediate and eventual ramifications to every person in this country. And uh, most incredibly, we have uh, the stunning reaction video from a major Democratic voice, a reaction to this news. According to Politico, special counsel Jack Smith is seeking to drop his criminal case against President-elect Donald Trump for attempting to subvert the 2020 election, saying Justice Department policy prohibits him from continuing the case after Trump's imminent inauguration. In a court filing on Monday, Smith said he consulted with Justice Department officials about whether an ongoing prosecution against a person elected president might continue. But he said officials concluded that a long-standing prohibition on prosecuting a sitting president would apply to pending cases against Trump. So here's the fallout of that bombshell, wasted years in the making. Uh, over on X, Kyle Griffin, uh, he's quick to point out, Jack Smith makes clear the government's position on the merits of the defendant's prosecution has not changed, but the circumstances have. And big note from Jack Smith as well, the prohibition of charging sitting presidents does not turn on the gravity of the crime's charge, the strength of the government's proof, or the merits of the prosecution, which the government stands fully behind. Uh, and finally, slightly maybe more heartening, possibly, uh, the case will move forward for Trump's co-conspirators, Walt Nada and Carlos de Oliveira, because unlike defendant Trump, no principle of temporary immunity applies to them. Earlier, a spokesperson for Smith's office declined to comment uh, beyond the filing. Trump's team, uh, imagine this, uh, they agreed to the dismissal motion, uh, and they don't appear to be seeking a more definitive burial of the case. A Trump spokesperson said, it's a major victory for the rule of law. That is not an opinion, I might add, shared by Representative Dan Goldman uh, in our uh, must-see uh, video clip today over on CNN. His reaction is about as powerful uh, and thought-provoking as we found. We want to discuss this and more with Democratic Congressman Dan Goldman of New York. He sits on the House Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. Just right off the bat, your reaction to Jack Smith announcing that he will file to dismiss the charges in the election subversion case against former President Trump. Well, look, I certainly understand why he did it, uh, given the Department of Justice policy that you cannot prosecute a sitting president. Uh, I think it is a shame for justice in this country. It establishes that Donald Trump is above the law. The Supreme Court put him above the law in that opinion that Paula just mentioned. Uh, but now he appears to escape full accountability for what were crimes charged by a grand jury. And I, I would just add one other thing that we ought to pay close attention to. We cannot normalize the fact that Donald Trump as the president elect should not be held accountable for crimes that he committed before. If he were to have fired the special counsel, that would be a gross abdication of the independence of the Department of Justice. And if the shoe were on the other foot, for example, and Joe Biden were to have filed, fired David Weiss, who clearly had a politicized investigation because the House Republicans effectively scuttled a plea agreement, uh, everyone would be up in arms. So let's make sure that we don't normalize Donald Trump's uh, political partisan behavior that has no place under our rule of law. Uh, Congressman, you know that the American people were well aware of the charges that Donald Trump uh, is facing, was facing in this case and several others. What do you make of the argument that they essentially served as a jury and by reelecting him and now making him president elect, they have weighed in on these matters? Uh, I don't give any credence to that argument. I think what was very clear is that people voted for Donald Trump uh, because they thought that he was going to improve the lives of the middle class and perhaps in addition that he would secure the border. They did not vote for him to dismantle our democracy, to attack the Constitution, to politicize all of our agencies, and certainly not as a referendum on his criminal cases. Uh, those cases should have been played out in a court of law. 
I believe the attorney general should have started the investigation a lot earlier. I believe the Supreme Court should have moved much quicker in its opinion. Uh, and this should, they, the, Donald Trump should not have been able to run out the clock on these charges. Uh, but I certainly don't think anything that came from the election was a reflection of support for Donald Trump uh, getting rid of these cases, largely because the American people, uh, as you and I, as well, we don't know what the actual evidence is. I, I mean, I, I imagine that a lot of voters had to know that those cases would go away if he were president, given what you t what you said about the Supreme Court's ruling on, on immunity. Um, th that doesn't change the way you think about this at all, the fact that voters must have known that he wasn't going to prison or, or to be convicted of some of these crimes if he was going to be elected? Well, look, I, I think ultimately the majority of voters that, who voted for Donald Trump decided that, uh, you know, what they're dealing with in their day to day lives, uh, understandably, matters a lot more than uh, what's going on in a criminal court with Donald Trump. Uh, I, I think it's sad. I think it should be disqualifying. But I certainly understand why people are more focused on their price of groceries, on their job prospects, sure. on a, the affordability crisis. But I do expect, Boris, that the special counsel will release a very detailed and exhaustive report outlining all of his evidence. Uh, that is the ordinary course for a special counsel when uh, they wind down. And uh, I would expect that the special counsel will do that before he leaves office. And Congressman, before we let you go, I have to ask you about this. You recently introduced a resolution to clarify the Constitution's two term limit for presidents. Do you think that there's a serious push among Republicans to change federal law to allow Trump to run in 2028? Well, let me just give you the example that I just mentioned, which is that uh, it appears to have been completely normalized that Donald Trump could either pardon himself or dismiss criminal charges against him if he becomes president. At one point, that was anathema and everyone was like, oh my God, that's crazy, that can't possibly be. It's the same thing now. This is how Donald Trump operates. He floats it, he normalizes it, and then it just becomes part of the common parlance. And so we wanted to lay down a marker to say, and put everyone on record, Republicans included, that the Constitution is very clear that he cannot serve another term. And what my fear is, is that with him floating that, with some of his cabinet picks, which clearly are prioritizing political loyalists, that Donald Trump is well on his way to dismantling our government and the way that it operates. And we and Congress, the Republicans especially in the Senate, need to be a check and balance to ensure that our government continues to function for the people People, not for Elon Musk and other billionaires. Uh, Congressman Dan Goldman, we have to leave the conversation there. Appreciate you joining us, sir. Man, the consistency with which Trump and his cohorts skirt legal and moral accountability, it's almost supernatural. And in this saga, the only forces of opposition for his verifiable role in upending the 2020 inauguration were these two bookends. And now another chapter ends in the tome of the twilight of American democracy. Uh, soon it may be time to close that book once and for all, place it up on the shelf next to Ray Bradbury and the Brothers Grimm, and hope that some incurious quizzling in the knave new world down the road grabs it and tosses it right on the bonfire of disorder and disdain for decency and democracy, and the fervent hopes that some kid never has to read it and never learns from today's irreversible lesson in political ennui and procedural miscalculation. Thank you, Merrick Garland.